So when you come here, if you start, if you do work uh, with the project, what we do is we receive applications from people who claim to have been wrongly convicted. We spend a lot of time gathering relevant materials, primarily the trial transcript, because it's important for us to understand how that person was convicted. And then our students will go on to review those materials and look at an understanding of how what the Crown case was against our applicant. Uh, and then we broaden our search out from there. We look at other witness statements, police statements, any appeal documents, et cetera. And students will work with our lawyers every week during trimester, uh, presenting what they've found each week to the lawyers. And then the lawyers in turn give our students instructions for work to complete in the, the next week. And so that might include things as it says there on the screen, um, completing case chronology so we know what happened from start to, to finish, witness summaries, and then we compare those witness statements to what was said in trial. We look at witnesses who may not have given evidence at trial but gave evidence initially, anyone who might be missing, the students draft letters. So we try and replicate a law firm environment as well where we have precedent letters um, and precedent documents that students then can use to create their own new communication. They also will speak to um, our applicants as well uh, on occasion. In addition to all of that, um, we advocate for law reform. As I said, we've, we've really struggled in um, a lot of ways over these last two decades to, to get any headway uh, in assisting people who have been wrongly convicted primarily because of a lot of the restrictions and limitations built into our justice system. So we uh, do submissions to, for example, the Attorney General in Queensland. I have been in touch with her. We met with her last year uh, to advocate for a second appeal option in, in Queensland, um, which would allow our applicants a direct route back into court rather than going through her as a politician. So there are issues there, DNA reforms, a Criminal Cases Review Commission, which I understand is being created in Canada at the moment exists already in the UK and in New Zealand as well, but we don't have a similar thing in Australia. So we're looking at, um, at that sort of um, body to deal with these cases as well. Preservation of evidence. Our laws in Australia are very limited in terms of preserving evidence. Biological evidence is kept for a long time, but if there is a item of clothing, for example, or a car that might have been the subject of a, a conviction, um, that can be returned to the person it came from or destroyed um, pretty much after the 28 day appeal period post conviction has expired. So there's very little opportunity for us to have material retested uh, to, in line with whatever advances might have occurred in DNA. So from when we started 20 years ago, the ability to extract minute pieces of DNA from items has advanced infinitely since 20 years ago, but we don't have those items left anymore. Um, and we also do a lot of research as well on those issues on the right hand side there, DNA testing, preservation, causes of wrongful conviction, forensic science, law reforms, comparative studies, comparing ourselves and our situation to, for example, Canadian jurisdictions or other jurisdictions um, to paint a picture of where the gaps might be in the Australian and Queensland system. And we're also interested as well in the well-being of our applicants uh, who are either in prison dealing with perhaps being their wrongful conviction and how they cope with that, but then also once they are released, uh, how they cope in, in the work, real world again, I guess, outside of prison. So Canadian students um, can apply to do the instance project, I think, as a course, if it fits within your program, but that's something that you have to sort of discuss, I think, with the program director and things like that. But otherwise, I love Canadian students um, and because of my connection to the country, but also because they're so keen um, and so enthusiastic and um, really wanting to help out. So they can offer us um, volunteer research assistance, case reviews, digitization of files. We are trying to bring ourselves into the 21st century and digitize all of our records. Um, any of you who might come to us with areas of expertise or interest already uh, that might be of use to us are always welcome. Uh, and then I always try and um, 
we finish, we only run in T1 and T2 in terms of our coursework. So um, there is a need for assistance over the summer, which runs from our summer, <laughs> October through to February, um, when our students tend to sort of go and do other clerkships and work and things like that. That's a good portion of the year where I really do need help. So that's an area where I like to bring in Canadian students um, who might be available uh, to assist us at that time. <laughs> 